The Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. and characters depicted in this drama are fictitious. Any similarity to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. Let successful radio, talking, and recording artists show you the glamorous road to fame and fortune. Write the words and music for a song hit. Let the three J's, Joe, Jack, and Jim, do the rest. We publish and distribute. We guarantee to put your song in the hands of leading movie producers, orchestras, and radio stations. Get out of the rut. Write a song. Yeah. How's that sound for an ad? Joe, you ought to quit music publishing and go in for ad writing. <laughs> Look at them. Sounds good, Joe. But you ought to have something about uh, send for our free booklet and full details. Oh, I got that here. Right down at the bottom. Now, the idea is that we'll run this in all the cheap magazines with a blank to be sent in. We've fiddled around with this racket long enough. Now it's time to branch out. That's the idea. Get into a nationwide business. Hold on, Jack. Hmm? Maybe we should get a lawyer to look things over. We'll be using the mails, you know. I talk to the lawyer, Jim. We aren't breaking any laws. What about that line, submitting songs to radio stations, dance bands, and all that? We will. We'll submit them. If they toss them in the wastebasket, that's not our worry. Okay. Another thing the lawyer said. What's that? We ought to protect each other. I got some contracts here, see? Contracts for what? We all sign them. It's a partnership agreement, so if we don't break up. Break up? Yeah. Suppose one of us lands a job with a radio sponsor or something. None of us could. You know that, Jack. We worked as a harmony trio. We're washed up as far as that stuff goes. Maybe your pipes were never good for solo stuff, but Jim can do a good tenor. Oh, not me. I'm with a publishing racket. There's big dough in it. And we don't have to worry about commercial contracts running out. Just the same. We should have an agreement. If one of us pulls out or dies, the other two get his share of the work. That's fair enough, Jack. Sounds all right to me. I thought it'd be okay with you two. If we're going into big business, we might as well be organized right. And what about this ad? Is it okay with you two to go ahead and run it? Sure. The sooner we get started, the sooner the door will begin rolling in. The advertising for the three J's was widely circulated throughout the country. And a few weeks later, cash came pouring into the publisher's office with every mail delivery. Hundreds of hopeful young people awaited the verdict of the racketeer trio, just as Waldo Fielding did. Any mail for me today, Mother? Uh, yes, Waldo. There's a letter from that song publisher. Where is it? Gee, I can hardly wait to hear what they say about my poem. Wouldn't it be swell if they put music to it and published? Uh, there's the letter, Waldo. Yes. If I could just get the start. Well, look at what some people make out of songs. I heard that sometimes a guy makes as much as... More. What is it, Waldo? They'll accept my poem. They will? Yeah, they like it. They'll have one of their best men write the tune, and then they'll publish it and see that it goes to all the radio stations and the movie studios and the dance bands. Oh, boy, I knew I could do it. But, Waldo, won't they expect a lot of money for doing all that? No. They say here that they'll take the chance on royalties. If I don't make anything, they won't make anything either. 
All I have to do is pay for the copyright and the printing cost and mailing. But uh, how much is that? Well, I, I suppose it'll seem a, seem like a lot to you, Mom. It, it's about $50. $50? But that's not much, really. Why, I'll bet a lawyer would charge almost that much just to get the copyright for me. And it might bring me in as much as half a million dollars. But, Waldo, $50, we haven't got that well, I'll get it. I'll sell my camera, and I can get something for my banjo. The chances are that Steve will pay a little for my shotgun. I'll get the money. Don't you worry about it, Ma. You just wait. I'll be rich one of these days. I'm going to start on another song poem right away. Several more weeks elapsed. And Joe, Jack, and Jim found a veritable gold mine in their venture. They expanded in their advertising, moved into larger offices. And then one day... Hey, Joe. Jack. Yeah, Jim? Some better business people have been checking up. So what? They don't like our way of doing business. Oh, they don't, huh? Well, isn't that too bad? What are they going to do about it? They'll probably publish some warnings about us. Ah, the suckers that send lyrics and tunes to us won't listen to warnings. They're so convinced that their stuff is good, they'll believe whatever they want to believe. That's the psychology of this business. Well, just passing on what that bird from the business bureau told me. He claims we're running a racket. It isn't a racket at all. We take a certain fee for publishing a song, agree to secure a copyright, furnish a tune, a lyric, whichever is required, and have a certain number of copies printed and distributed. And we do all those things. Certainly. We fulfill our part of the contract to the letter. There isn't a law in the country that can touch us. But it won't do us any good to have newspaper ads calling attention to our way of doing business. Well, we can't stop it, can we? Well, I thought if it was agreeable to you two, I'd uh, make a few promises and stall things off for a while. We're really just getting a foothold. An ad in the paper in one city isn't going to hurt us much. Our business is nationwide. Let them advertise. Can't hurt us. Okay, Jack, it's up to you. And Joe? I agree with Jack. Now, uh, what about the tunes for this batch of stuff that came in today? You got it all sorted according to meter, haven't you? Yeah. Okay, then let's have it. I'll wrap out a few little jingles and give them some music. Seems to me it's kind of risky using the same tune for half a dozen different songs. Nah, the stuff never amounts to anything. Nobody will ever hear it. What's the difference? I can't think of 150 new tunes every day. You keep the stuff pretty well scattered, though, don't you, Jim? Sure. For example, I'll use that tune, Moonlight Love, on the poem of a guy in New York, one in St. Louis, maybe one in Omaha, one on the West Coast. That saved me writing four different tunes, see? It'd be kind of tough if the fellas ever got together and found they had the same tune. Fat chance of that. Well, what would happen if one of the songs became a hit? A hit? <laughs> That's a good one, Joe. How can any of this stuff ever be a hit? We'll see to it that it isn't. I... I wanted to speak to you. We're in conference. What do you want here? My name is Fielding. Waldo Fielding. I sent you a song a few weeks ago. Remember the name? Uh, sorry, Feeling. We're in conference now. We can't be disturbed. I've been trying for four days to see you. I spent all my money. What do you want to see us about, kid? My song. Did you get your copies of it? Uh, yes, sir, but I wondered if there hadn't been some sales made. Mm. Where are you from? Simmons Corners. Well, what are you doing here in the big city? Well, I I thought my song would be selling, so I came here. I, I thought I might be able to do better if I was working closer with you. You see the girl in the outer office and ask her to check up on the sales of your song. But I doubt if it's had any sales yet. You know, it takes time to put the new things over. Well, I, I, I thought I might make a personal appearance with an orchestra or something. <laughs> well, we'll send for you when we want you for that, kid. I I did speak to the girl. What'd she tell you? She said that there hadn't been any sales yet. Well, well that's the answer, then. Why don't you go back to Simmons Corners or wherever your home is and stay there till we send for you? Well, I... Look, there must be some sales. If you sent that song out to all the people you claim you did, I... I haven't eaten in two days. I... I gotta have some money. Well, what do you want us to do? Dish it out of our pockets? We're running a publishing house, not a traveler's aid. But, yes, sir. We sent you 50 copies of the song. Why don't you go out in the street corner and try to peddle them or something? That's one way to drum up business. Yes, sir. You want to buy a song? Say, mister, do you want to buy a copy of my song? <laughs> Not today. Buy a copy of my song, lady. Get out of my way, please. Look, mister, do you, do you want to take a copy of the newest song hit home? Hey, you. What are you doing there blocking the traffic? Oh, officer, I, I didn't mean anything. What's this you're trying to peddle? Music? It, yes, sir. I'm 
I'm trying to tell a song. Maybe you'd better find out something about the laws of this town. You can't stand on street corners interfering with pedestrians, peddling music. Got a license? License? No, sir, I haven't. Uh, you'd better come down to the station house with me, I guess. No. No, please. I didn't know. Come on, kid. You can't get away with this sort of thing. <sighs> hey, suffering catfish, the kid's passed out. What have you got there, Doyle? Lowry, why is it that you're every place I am? I learned when I first started in as reporter for the Sentinel, Doyle, that if I keep close enough to you, I see things happen. Hey, what's the matter with the kid? You crown him with your nightstick? No. I just started to take him in for peddling music on the street, and he passed out cold on me. Mm, the kid looks half starved. Oh, he does at that. How long is it since he's eaten? I don't know. Here, Lowry, stay with him till I call the wagon. Yeah, maybe I'll get a story here. This looks like human interest stuff. Ed Lowry, the star reporter of the Daily Sentinel, came into the office of the young publisher, Britt Reed, a couple of hours later. Miss Case, Reed's secretary, said... Mr. Reed's not in now, Lowry. But I gotta see him about a special story. He's still out. Where? How the dickens do I know where he goes? I'm the last one he tells. It's discouraging. Discouraging? Hey, now listen, Casey. Don't get ideas that the boss is interested in you. He travels with the 400. Don't be idiotic. As far as Britt Reed is concerned, you're just part of the office furniture. But I do wish he'd settled down long enough so I could write to his father with some feeling of confidence. Now, what's the trouble? Oh, just as soon as I write Mr. Reed and tell him that Britt's taking an interest in the Daily Sentinel, he, he disappears. <laughs> Lady, if I had his dough, I'd never come to the office. During the past week, he's been out to some affair almost every night. He's bored with the office again. Well, he'll get his fill of nightlife and then settle down again. Yes, until he gets his fill of the newspaper business again. Oh, here he is. Say, boss, I ran into Doyle, the big cop, today. Oh, yes? And he had a kid in tow. The kid had passed out from hunger. But when Doyle spotted him first, he was trying to peddle a song he'd written. A song? And it ties right in with the racket we've been working on. Uh, what racket was that, Larry? Music publishing. You know, those wildcat publishers that call themselves Joe, Jack, and Jim, the three J's? Who are they? A uh, broken-down vocal trio that hit a good racket. I got a first-hand story from one of the victims of the racket. The poor kid got just enough encouragement from them to quit his job and leave home. Here, here's the song he wrote. I brought a copy for you. I'll leave it with Miss Case. I'll take it with me when I go home. But what about my story? I got pictures of the kid. I speak to the city editor about it. He's paid to handle that sort of thing. But maybe there's editorial meat in it. Gunnigan's the best judge for that. Oh, hang it all. What's the matter, Larry? Well, look here, boss. Take it to Gunnigan, Larry. Okay, okay. I'll take it to Gunnigan. There's the words and music. Mr. Reed. Yes, Miss Case? I'm going to stick my neck out again. Isn't there something we can do to make the office more attractive for you? Oh, no. It's uh, quite all right, Miss Case. Then why can't... <laughs> why won't you... Oh, I understand, Miss Case. You're concerned again because I'm uh, spending too little time around here. Frankly, I am, Mr. Reed. I hate to keep writing your father that you... Ah, I'm sorry. But you'll have to admit that newspaper work hasn't a great deal of adventure. It might have. Oh, yes, Miss Case, it might have. There was plenty of excitement while the Green Hornet was so active. Uh -huh. There was, wasn't there? I wonder if the Hornet has been killed. Killed? Well, why, Miss Case? We haven't had a story about a Hornet adventure in quite a while. Well, that's true. He may have been killed or he may have, well, retired. Mm, I doubt if the Green Hornet would retire, Miss Case. Well, perhaps then the police and public have been so greatly aroused that the Hornet doesn't risk making another appearance. That's quite possible. I never saw you more interested in the newspaper than while the Green Hornet was running wild. Well, you must admit the Green Hornet furnished news. He certainly did. Mr. Reed, there's just as much excitement in everyday life if you could only realize it. For example? For example, that lad that Lowry tried to tell you about. Waldo Fielding. Oh, there's human interest. Poor chap that falls for racketeers, quits his job in the little home community. Comes to the big city, goes hungry, is misled and victimized by these fake music publishers. Isn't there something the law can do about publishers of that sort? If there were, the law would be doing it. But they stay inside the law, Mr. Reed. According to Lowry, they have a contract. And they fulfill the terms of the contract. So the law is helpless. Yeah, I've heard about the racket, Miss Case. Aren't you going into your office? No, well, I think I'll leave for the day. It's after four. But, Mr. I'll Reed... I'll go along with me just to satisfy Lowry. Very well. See you sometime tomorrow. You will stop in then tomorrow. Oh, yes, I'll probably stop in. The Green Hornet would only start up again, and perhaps Britt Reed would become interested in the publication of news. <laughs> The 
curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. to continue our story. Britt Reed went directly from his office to his apartment. He was uneasy and restless, and only Cato, his faithful valet, realized the real cause of the uneasiness. You're right, Cato. I do feel handcuffed, hampered, tied down. If there's only some way the Hornet could get at this music publishing racket, I'd go out. That's a risk, Mr. Britt. A risk we can't find. There's a risk in anything, Cato. Yes, Mr. Britt. I can't find any way it can be broken up. Not even if we do use the role of the Green Hornet to get at them. Is it big? It's nationwide. Those three crooks, Joe, Jack, and Jim, have thousands of people all over the country sending money to them. Money that won't bring a thing except false encouragement and heartbreak. Yes, sir. Yeah, look at tonight's Sentinel. Look at that warning from the Better Business Barrel. They wanted to buy a few inches. I gave them a quarter of a page. But do you think that'll stop people from being made victims? Not on your life. I even ran one of the songs, a typical song, copyrighted and published by Joe, Jack, and Jim, to show the stuff they call good. Get off. I haven't it just occurred to me. What is it? I have an idea, Cato. Life's going to be exciting after all. This may be the entering wedge. Maybe this is what the Green Hornet's been waiting for. Yeah, and for the business bureau, Cato. It shows a typical song published by that firm of Joe, Jack, and Jim. Yes, Mr. And Reed. the music for this is the same tune that was used by that young chap Lowry brought in a story about. It is. It definitely is. I don't know a great deal about music, but I do know that much. Did I have an engagement for tonight? Very a call, Mr. Reed. Cancel it, then. We're going to make other plans. What are they? This may give me the lead I need to smash that publishing firm. Joe, Jack, and Jim. Well, we'll see if they're staying within the law. Well, what can you do? Do? I'll go to the office. I want to look around there for a while. And if my suspicions are correct, we'll hold a meeting of the firm. The firm? Joe, Jack, and Jim. Come on. We're taking out the Black Beauty. Britt Reed went through a secret panel in the rear of his clothes press, and then by means of a passage between the walls of the apartment building, he reached a small door that opened into the loft of an old, supposedly abandoned livery stable. It was here, unknown to everyone, that the sleek black car of the Green Hornet was housed. Is the car ready, Cato? Yes, sir. All right, get in. Mask? Here, in compartment. A gas weapon? Here. Good enough. I want to telephone Joe, Jack, and Jim, but I can do that from their own office later on this evening. Yes, sir. Now, let's get going. There's the night watchman, Cato. Standing at the entrance to the building. Yes, sir. You take the car around to the rear. I'll handle him. What are you going to do? I'll have to knock him out and get him out of the way. Can't take chances on him. Take the car now. You know where to meet me? I know. At Brimble, low over his eyes, almost hiding the mask, the Green Hornet approached the entrance of the office building where a man stood smoking a pipe. Offices are all closed now, mister. I, uh... I don't want to hurt you. <coughs> what have you done, Hornet? That'll hold you for an hour. If I need more time, I'll give you some more gas. Dragging the unconscious form of the watchman inside the building, the Green Hornet left him in a corner, then ran the elevator to the tenth floor. Half an hour later, the three J's had a phone call at their apartment. I suppose that's just another one of these would-be writers calling for information on his song hit. Answer, hey, Jack. Hello. Oh, I wish we'd given that feeling kid a little dough. Oh, stop harping about him, Jim. Yeah. Passing out in the street like he did. Hunger. 
That won't do us any good. Well, it won't hurt us any. Yeah? For the love of Pete, forget him. He just won. Yeah. He should have come to the city in the first place. Maybe you're right, Joe. That'll be swell. Who's he got on the phone? I don't know. Looks as if it's something pretty good. Yes, sir. Right away. Hey, fellas, we're set to really go places. Who was that? A publisher. Publisher? Magazine publisher. One of those cheap picture mags. He's in town for the evening and wants to talk to us about running a picture story of our business. Yeah? Hey, that would be swell publicity. Wouldn't it, though? That'll offset what the Sentinel Light has done. Morn offset it. It's a national magazine. When do you see him? Right away. He asked if I couldn't meet him in our office tonight. Tonight? Yeah, and let him see what sort of picture story could be run. Good, we'll go with you. Yeah, come on, let's start. This is the break of a lifetime. <laughs> Joe, Jack, and Jim rushed in a cab to their office building and found the front door open. The watchman must be on the first floor. Yeah, that'll save us waiting for the elevator. Hey, Larry! Where are you? He isn't on the first floor. The elevator's just coming down now. You shouldn't leave the front door open like that. Don't worry about it. Well, Larry, you're covered. What in place? Mass! The Green Hornet! One of you can run this elevator. Get in there or I'll fold you up where the night watchman is. You killed him. Murder. Get aboard. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. Well, what are you after? Up to your office. Get going now. The tenth floor, you know. Stop waving that gun around. I'll stop by letting you have it at the first sign of any rough stuff. I'll take it. Oh, Jim. <coughs> Let that warn you two. Shot him in cold blood. Yeah. How do you like it? Leave him right where he is. You open that door and get to your office. What are you going to do? You'll find a... Uh, step along there. There's a light there. I left it. You needn't think about the magazine publisher because I was the one who phoned you. I took the liberty of using your own telephone. I, I have keys. You won't need them. I've unlocked the door and everything else that needs unlocking. Now what? Sit down in there. What's all this stuff? Your so-called song hit. Yeah, I... I see. A couple of them have possibilities, haven't they, Jack? But... Why, sure, sure they have. Suppose the Green Hornet were to steal one of them. Not just suppose there would be a lot of publicity about the Green Hornet shooting two men, maybe more, to get possession of one specific song. What would happen to the sale of that song? See, that's right. It would become the hit of the week. Every band would use it, every radio station would be featuring it on a song and bring thousands and thousands of dollars in royalties. Maybe we can make a deal. Before I finish talking to you, Crook, you won't want that sort of thing to happen. What? Why not? Look here, Hornet. You're we... tower gonna be broke. You're going to be smashed to a finish. Broke? Smashed? I've already addressed a few envelopes, and I'll say that the rest are addressed. There they are. Take a look at them. I I don't understand. You will. Take a look at those three sheets of music I've laid out for you. What about it? Who wrote that music? We, we did. What, what of it? And who secured copyrights? We did. See, Every here. one of these songs can be made into a hit tune with the right promotion. I think I can see that it gets that promotion. I've already explained how. Well, a hit is what... We can't afford a hit. Suppose, for example, this number becomes a hit. What do you suppose the authors of these other songs with the same music would do? They'd sue, wouldn't they? Yeah, they, they'd probably sue. There were probably a dozen other poets who've been given the same melody for their song. They'd all start lawsuits. You two'd be dragged through every court in the country. Your whole racketeering business would be laid out in the open. Can you stand having a sensational song hit? I, I don't know. You know you can't. That's why I came here. It was a mistake. Uh, that's it. It was a mistake. A mistake. Uh, the printers made a mistake. They got the words and music. And they told them. I could go through your files and show you plenty of the same sort of mistakes. Sit down at that desk. What do you want? Money. Lots of money. There's your checkbook. I have to notice your bank balance there. You can write a lot of checks. Checks? I said checks. For who? Make out the first to Harvey Dale. D-A-L-E. According to your records, he's paid in $150. That's the amount you'll send him. And who else? Start writing. I'll do it. Oh, no, we'll have Jack do it. He's the one whose signature makes those checks worth something. Go on now, start writing. Now you see here. Right. How far are you going? As far as your bank balance will allow. There's 200 to go to Mrs. Agnew, 100 to each of the people on this list, 75 to these people. And there's a list of those who'll get $50 each. I'll be broke. I can't afford all that. You can't afford not to pay up. You'll afford it a whole lot better than these people contributed to your success. There's, there's another thing, Jack. Oh, Robin Steele. Shut up! They said there was another thing. We may have to overdraw your bank account considerably. I can't. You better convert some of the bonds you hold to cover the checks you make out tonight. I can't. You might even have I... to trade in some life insurance. If you don't cover those checks, you'll mighty soon find yourself not only in court, but eventually in jail. 
What would a jury made of people who read all about your racket in the magazines and newspapers give you? Take your choice, Rat. Go broke and stay free, or go broke and go to jail. And make out checks until you get the writer's cramp. And see that those checks clear the bank. By first one threat, then another, the Green Hornet compelled the publisher to make out checks to refund money. And then... That's as far as your cash will go. I'll see to it that these envelopes are mailed. You can't get away with it. No? Well, let me explain that I can still make one of your songs a hit. The song that Jim gave his life to keep from the Green Hornet. The song that has some hidden significance to the Green Hornet. One small bit of the song torn and found in the clenched fist of the latest victim of the Hornet's weapon. But Jim... I'm taking him with me. I know whether or not those checks go to the bank. If they don't, Jim will be found with this emblem plastered to his forehead. The mark of the Green Hornet. And this part of this song... Clenched in his fist. Wait, wait. If, if we don't stop payment, if those checks go through... That will have nothing but poverty to worry you. And don't try another racket like this one. The Green Hornet can make one of your songs a hit at any time. Only the next time, it might be one of you who furnishes the clenched fist. <laughs> Leaving the two racketeers in their office, the Hornet took the elevator to the first floor, dragged the still unconscious man to the rear door of the building, and put him into the car. That'll do, Cato. What do we do with him? We'll have to keep him undercover and release checks through the bank. And then, Cato, we can let him go. Laurie, have you heard the news? Which news? That feeling kid got a refund from Joel, Jack, and Jim. That's news. Yes, and the mark of the Green Hornet was on the letter that went with it. Yeah, that's a page one story. The Hornet has stepped out again. I wish I had all the details. But that's not the biggest thing. Mr. Reed was in bright and early this morning. He's a newspaper man again. He's been working like a Trojan all day, trying to run down some leads on the Hornet from what information he gathered. He is? Yeah, but it won't last. I'm certain that he'll lose interest again if the Green Hornet goes back into seclusion. But what if the Green Hornet was to be captured? I'm afraid Britt Reed would lose interest in the Sentinel in that case, too. Sentinel Pepper! Green Hornet medals check! Exclusive Green Hornet story! Green Hornet not large! Just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs>